May the God of heaven bless you all greatly. To all the brothers and sisters who have been congregating themselves for some time in the church of the Lord, and also to those of you who accompany us in this place with the purpose of giving all the glory and honor and all the praise to our God. Welcome to those who visit us today for the first time, who today are connecting to this live stream and had never heard of the Church of God Ministry of Jesus Christ International. Well, today, the God of heaven, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the creator of the universe, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, this God of the Bible has brought you or has brought you to one of our places of congregation to manifest in your life. We present to you a God who is forever. We present to you a God who manifests in our lives. We present to you a God who through the Holy Spirit guides us through dreams, through visions, and through prophecy. And to this God who has had a great mercy to each and every one of us, we're gonna dedicate this beautiful gathering with our singing, with the reading of the Bible, and through our praying to God so that God can manifest and glorify himself like his good word says that he manifests within the worship of his people. Glory to the Lord. We're going to be praying, O Heavenly Father, you great and wonderful God of glory. When we see the heavens, O Lord, creation of your hands, the moon and the stars that you created, we say, what have we done so that you can have such great mercy with us? But with your great mercy, you have allowed us to get to know a path of blessings, a path of glory, a path of manifestation. And in your manifestation, Lord, we understand that we are before the God of the Bible, that powerful God, creator of the heavens and the earth, father of our Lord Jesus Christ and our father, Thank you, O Lord. We give you for your manifestation, your glorious manifestation. We give you thanks for your marvelous manifestation. We give you thanks, O Lord, because your blessing has been in each and every one of us in a plentiful way since the first moment that you manifested in our lives. We want to praise you, O Lord, and we want to exalt you. We want to glorify you, O Lord, because only you are worthy of all these songs, of this exaltation, of this praise. Heavenly Father, we know that you praised amongst the great congregation and that great congregation is the church of the living God and in the church of the living God the miracles are a constant just like the marvelous and the great and wonderful works through the reading of the Bible, through the songs, through the choruses and the testimonies, and through everything that we're going to do for you, O Lord, because it is going to be to express our gratitude, to give you all glory and honor. We express and we ask all of these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us now read in our Bibles, 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, First Epistle of Apostle Paul to the Corinthians in chapter number two, we're going to be reading a great blessing, a blessing that is like no other, a blessing that is majestic from our heavenly God from verse number six in chapter number two from the first epistle of Apostle Paul to the Corinthians. Let us read now all together to honor and bless the name of our Lord. However, we speak what wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? 
Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. And the things that God has freely given to us has been great. But it also says, these things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. How great and beautiful is our God. Glory to the Lord. You may have a seat, brothers and sisters. We continue to bless our Heavenly Father. Beautiful words. Like when Apostle Paul was saying that the natural man does not perceive the things that are of the Spirit. Because for him, they are crazy. And it is craziness that some people think that it is craziness that God speaks in this time. But we have the great blessing the beautiful, glorious blessing that God speaks to us and guides us through the through prophecy, through dreams, and through the visions. We have a powerful God, a God of all ages. We preach a God that hasn't died. We preach a God that spoke in antiquity and continues to speak and now speaks to us today through the Holy Spirit. How great and wonderful is our Lord. And we sing to the Lord hymns and spiritual songs. Hymn number 177. It is heaven down there. Hymn number 177. is our God and it really is a heaven because God manifests in our lives how great is our God because of it 
because more than 60 years ago, a great manifestation started. It was just four people who were gathered praying at about one o'clock in the morning, God manifested and the Holy Spirit spoke and he announced that he would be raising up a great church, a church that would be governed by himself, that would be guided by himself. And that from that moment, that great manifestation started and he started to fulfill his words. And today we are in six of the seven continents in the world. And we can say that we are greeting all the brothers and sisters in the continent of Africa, in the North and South American continents, in Europe and in Asia. What a great blessing it is because God fulfills his promise and his promises are true. And he announced and he promised that he would be transforming and changing and delivering and bringing one by one and two by two. And that's why we cannot deny that this is a heaven where peace and joy and the transformation of the being and where the power of the Holy Spirit is a constant that it is not just with us, but that we have the great blessing that he is also in our hearts. Hallelujah. Glory to our Lord. That Emmanuel, God with us, God within us and all of us enjoying his guidance, that great path that he is showing us to salvation, to eternal life. There are many who never are able to understand, but we invite you to the congregation. The congregation is fundamental. If you want to pray in your homes, God is going to hear you, but come to the congregation so that you can see the manifestation of the power of God with deliverance, with great liberty, with manifestation. And if you still cannot understand, we want to invite you to also visit our official website and our YouTube channel, the Church of God, a ministry of Jesus Christ International, or the channel of our spiritual leader, Maria Luisa Piraquive official, and great testimonies there, and teachings there, and sermons, and meditations, and beautiful teachings that give testimony to the living word of a living God of this scripture that is wonderful because we live this great blessing that God is with us. Hallelujah. Glory to our Lord. We're going to also sing hymn number 243, a blessing that all of us can also achieve in the church, the baptism with the Holy Spirit. If you come to the congregation, you can rejoice this manifestation or in this same way, also reach the spiritual gifts because the spiritual gifts are for everyone. They're not just for some exclusive people in the congregation, but God, by bringing you to this place, you can access this great blessing of this wonderful blessing to be able to live in your own life and be able to minister the power of this living and powerful God. How great and wonderful is our Lord. Hymn number 243, Back to Pentecost. Dios no nos deja 
cuando venga el to sing to our God, we start to feel the presence of the Holy Spirit, that joy that is born in our hearts for the presence of a living and powerful God. It is worth it. You who are watching us today, that you don't just watch the live streams in this way, but that you also visit a congregation nearby where you will receive the laying of hands. We will, uh, we will minister prophecy to you so that God can make beautiful promises to you that will be in your heart and bring great peace and joy. In the same way, the Lord will teach you his doctrine through the Holy Scriptures because we are Christians. We put the Bible to practice and in the church in congregation is where all of us revive. It is where all of us pray and it is where all of us are filled with with that great joy that means that God is with us. Glory to the Lord. In this same way, you can also access the church. You can see on my right hand side, the initials of the church, idmji.org, where you will be able to see great and beautiful Bible studies where brothers and sisters ask questions, very specific questions, with very clear answers according to everything that the Holy Spirit reveals. That's why we're all so grateful with our Almighty God. And we're going to stand up, brothers and sisters, to express our gratitude to God. And in this same way, we're also going to be praying for the tithes because we know that all the blessings come from God and so that we can spread the gospel through all the continents and this great glory, because if there is something that humanity needs is to be able to get to know a living and powerful God that can mark our path and destiny so that we can reach salvation and eternal life. But so that we can actually preach this gospel, we tithe and we give our offerings because it has been the Holy Spirit who has taught us that when we do it with faith and with love and with understanding that he manifests in a unique way. Blessed Lord. You Holy Father from heaven, blessed Father, how great is your name, O Lord, in all of the earth. What a great blessing. And what a blessing, O Lord, it is to be able to enjoy of the presence of the God of Abraham, of the God of Isaac, and of the God of Jacob. To be able to enjoy all of these marvelous blessings that have been announced since before the creation of the world, that God is with us, to understand that His manifestation is a reality, to see everything that has occurred in the last 60 years that you have been manifesting, so many souls, O oh Lord, that you have brought to you. And if we looked, O oh Lord, we wouldn't be able to know, and we wouldn't be able to know and understand the exact number because just like you promised it to Abraham, O oh Lord, we are like the number of stars in the sky, O oh Lord, or like the sand in the ocean. You have brought many souls, O oh Lord, more than 20 languages around the world receiving this great manifestation, this beautiful manifestation, this marvelous manifestation, and the change of life, the deliverance, O oh Lord. So much blessing, O oh Lord, the miracles that are not few. The marvelous things, O oh Lord, the wonderful works that you have done, the change of life, O oh Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because your blessing has been glorious and unmeasurable, O oh Lord. And that's why we tithe, O oh Lord, because this gospel, O oh Lord, we ought to share it with all of humanity, O oh Lord, if, so that all of humanity can get to know that you are raising your church, O oh Lord, in this earth. And that's why we tithe, O oh Lord, with our hearts, with our soul, O oh Lord, like only you deserve, O oh Lord, so that the blessing can continue to be abundant in your church and in each and every one of us, O oh Lord. We express all of these things and we ask all of these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And by singing, God also manifests. That's why the Bible teaches this in Psalm number 22 that says that God is enthroned in the praises of Israel. That's why we're going to sing two choruses to the Lord. I feel glad here in the Church of God, chorus number 40, 
in chorus number 150, give me oil. Many miracles have occurred in the church. There was a sister who had a deformation in her arm. The diagnosis was very negative from the doctors to be able to recover the movement in her arm, but it was in a worship service where she felt a very big pain. And when she took off her coat to take a look, the deformation had gone away and her arm was completely healed. It was in a worship service, glory and honor to the most high. It was during a worship service. There was a young child who had a difficulty to read and write. And the parents were constant in the worship services, always praising God. And they never asked God anything in the worship service. They only expressed their gratitude to God. And little by little, this young child child was started to receive the ability to read and write and now he is in the first places of his class there was a sister also it was a sister who was four years old her parents in the church constant in the worship services and the bible studies this this young girl had epilepsy but in this moment in the prayer of a bible study where god manifested 15 years have gone by and this young girl doesn't have any of these epilepsy episodes anymore. Glory and honor be to God. That's why we ought to sing to the Lord and why it is worth it to sing to him with all of our hearts and with all of our being. Chorus number 40 and chorus number 150.
the glory and honor be to the Lord. And now I will leave you in the company of the person that God has taught us to respect, to value, and to love, our sister, Mara Luisa Piraquive. May the Lord bless you greatly and pour showers of blessings upon all of you, my beloved brothers and sisters, you who are here with me, and all the people, brothers and sisters, people who are logging on to the sermon today, newcomers, people who do not congregate in a church yet, but like to watch the sermon, a very warm greeting to all of you. May God bless you greatly. May the mercy of God, his love, his forgiveness be upon all of you, upon all of us. Therefore, today also we are here to honor the Lord, to glorify his name, to exalt him, and to put on high the name of our God, the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are here reflecting on the Gospels. And here the Lord is teaching us through the Bible, teaching us the word, the doctrine, the commandments that God at one point gave Moses so that he could teach the people. Those commandments, that word, that doctrine, those orders, those ordinances, they have not expired. They are valid. And today, the Holy Spirit is helping us to follow, to follow these steps, to follow these parameters and to seek our God, that mighty God that was the same yesterday and is today and forever. He hasn't changed. He will not change. He is timeless. He does not have to become modern or update because he has been the same always. And so we are here exalting God with our presence by congregating to praise his name, to leave our problems outside, for a moment, we leave our sorrows behind, things that have happened to us in life, and now we are going to make our hearts happy by praising our God and reading the Bible and honoring the Lord through every verse that we are reading that is to honor our God. Therefore, you may be seated, you may find your places, and we are going to be opening to Matthew 8. In Matthew chapter 8, that is what we're covering today. And we are going to be reading for all of the newcomers or for first time guests. We are here in the gospel according to Matthew. And the Lord Jesus Christ is preaching the kingdom of heaven. And it consists of of teaching the law of Moses, explaining it, and teach how the law of Moses needed to be fulfilled word for word. And also, at the same time, the Lord was teaching now the kingdom to those people so that his followers could begin to enjoy those good tidings of salvation called the perfect gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is how we begin in chapter 8 of Matthew that says that when Jesus had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. Generally, there, those mountains that are there near Jerusalem, geographically speaking, talking about the physical Jerusalem, 
that territory. The mountains aren't very tall. In some places, they call them mounds. And that is why the Lord usually would go on those mountains because they were easy to climb by walking without any effort, without working too hard. And he would always go there to preach and people would follow him. And it says that the Lord came down that day. He was preaching his word because the three years that he dedicated to preach the gospel, he never stopped, not one day nor one night. And it says that many people followed him. And in two, it says, and behold, a leper came and worshiped him saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him saying, I am willing, be cleansed. In other words, the Lord worked that miracle in that moment. Immediately, his leprosy was cleansed because this man at that moment showed that he had faith, that he believed and trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ because he had been listening to his teaching, to his sermon. And that is why he asked to be cleansed because he believed in the doctrine that the Lord was preaching. He believed that that person was a person sent by God. And that is why the Lord, knowing this person's faith, he said, I am willing and you will be cleansed. He said immediately his leprosy was cleansed completely. And Jesus said to him, to the leper, see that you tell no one, but go your way, show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to the lepers. It says, as a testimony to them, to the lepers. And if we go from here to Leviticus 14, we are not going to read it because it's the entire chapter. It's a very long chapter here in Leviticus 14. But if you would like to go to Leviticus 14 to take a quick look, as one would say, to look at the laws that God had established about leprosy or the lepers. And so here in Leviticus 14 from verse 1 up to verse 57, the Lord is speaking about laws, rules about the lepers. Here in the time of the law of Moses, in ancient times, a person that had leprosy was because they had sinned. The illness came because of sin. Someone would surely get leprosy for having committed a very serious sin. And so God would punish people with leprosy. And they had to fulfill a series of requirements because God had mercy. That is why here in 14.1, God says to Moses, The Lord spoke to Moses saying, This shall be the law of the leper for the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought to the priest. So here it says that the priest shall go out of the camp and do a series of rituals, give him orders, he is purified. This leper needs to bring an offering also to God. It would be birds. They need to bring herbs and wood. And the priest would begin to do a series of rituals to heal the person. And that would take a long time. It wasn't just one day that this man was going to be healed from leprosy, but it was a process. And we see all of these verses that talk about all of the requirements and the things that the priest needed to do in order to cleanse the leprosy from this person. So he needed to bring an offering. Whoever was poor needed to bring a lamb and two doves as an offering. And so the priest would sacrifice the animals 
and would put the blood on the leper and he would pray and ask God and he would send him to go and bathe, change their garments and on the eighth day, seventh day, do this or that. Well, it was a series of requirements that this leper needed to fulfill. I think that this process must have taken a long time for the priest in order to cleanse the leper. So here at the end of the verse, when all of the requirements end, it says, this is the law. It says, this is the law for any leprous sore and scale. These are all of the things that these people who are sick from this leprosy need to do. It says, for the leprosy of a garment and of a house, for a swelling and a scab and a bright spot, to teach when it is unclean and when it is clean. This is the law of leprosy. So I do suggest you read this. Read all of this so that you may realize how difficult it was as well to obtain God's blessings because these lepers became this way because of sin, for having offended God, for having committed an offense against God, and the Lord would immediately punish with illnesses, with leprosy, or a different way as well. And so it's very important to read this chapter. Let us go back to Matthew. And so this is why here the Lord Jesus, since he was teaching the law, he was explaining the law, saying to the people, to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, he was saying, you all have never fulfilled the law of Moses. You have never fulfilled it. You have never completed those ordinances that God gave through Moses. Therefore, all of you are offenders of the law of Moses. You are debtors to God because you never, no one has completed. There is not one who has done God's will. That is what the Lord would say. That is why here in verse 4 of chapter 8 in Matthew, the Lord says to the leper, look at how easy the Lord Jesus Christ, as the high priest also, that he is, he in that moment, he cleansed the leprosy from this man, he healed him, and immediately without having to do all of those requirements that Moses had ordered. Because it was the Lord, it was the Lord himself, the Savior, the Mediator, the Forerunner of Salvation, God himself there working that miracle. That is why he didn't have to do all of those rituals that needed to be done. All he said was, I am willing, be cleansed, and immediately the man, he was healed. And the Lord then says, tell no one, but go to the priest, because that is what Moses ordered. You need to go and bring the offering that Moses commanded. The poor would go and bring two turtle doves and a lamb. And it says that that was a testimony and an order that God had given to the lepers. So here we understand this verse better. When the Lord tells him, show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to the lepers. So you show yourself to the priest so that he may declare you cleansed. And in this way, it is fulfilled or you fulfill a rule found in the law of Moses by doing these things. It is very beautiful to see the way in which the Lord here was explaining the law of Moses to fulfill it precisely. But it's also very beautiful that to see that we see today that there are many illnesses and perhaps leprosy also exists today. It exists. But there are also other illnesses that exist that are incurable. And we need to pray about these illnesses and ask our God, our Lord, to heal us. And then he directly heals us immediately. And thanks be to God that today we don't need to go and do all of these rituals that needed to be done in the law of Moses to obtain a benefit, a blessing from God. Our God immediately 
works the miracle. Blessed is the name of our Lord. Thanks be to our God. Very well. Now we are going to continue here because the Lord Jesus always touched upon different topics, teaching different things. It says here that Jesus then entered Capernaum after having worked miracles, most likely. We don't know if it was that same day or a different day. It says that Jesus had entered Capernaum. A centurion came to him, pleading him. Capernaum is a town located on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. It says that a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. All of those who were sick in antiquity had the same types of illnesses. And who was the one who had to heal? The high priest. But the sick needed to go to the temple to the high priest to present himself, and according to their illness, he would do the rituals. And so the high priest would do all of these things so that God would heal the person. And that was something very difficult. And also the person needed to bring that offering. And if they lived far, there were people who prefer to die this way to not walk or go far to see if the priest would be able to work the miracle in him or not. Many things happened in antiquity. And that is why the people missed many blessings from God due to negligence, due to disbelief, due to a harden of heart or laziness, because they didn't even want to go to Jerusalem to worship God because they thought it was far away. And so they did not want to walk or travel too far. And so in their places, wherever they lived, they wanted things to be easy. And so they began to make their own gods, create statues and believe in idols. And to have gods of silver, gold, wood, stones, or trees and worship them all because they were too lazy to go to Jerusalem to the temple to worship God and all of these things happened in antiquity that is why the Lord our God became very angry and so it says that this paralyzed man was dreadfully tormented and there he heard that the Lord Jesus was preaching that he was working miracles and signs and wonders and so he said I'm going to take this time to ask him for mercy and it was for this centurion's servant. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The Lord said to the centurion that he was going to go and heal his servant who was paralyzed and he was tormented by evil spirits. And Jesus said to him, I will go. And the centurion answered and said, No, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. I don't want you to go to my house, Lord. It's far and you don't have to do these things. But only speak a word and my servant will be healed. And so the Lord was marveled. And why was he marveled? Why was he marveled by this centurion? His faith. In that moment, his faith, his trust, he believed the Lord. He believed in his sermon. He believed in the Lord's testimony that he was giving, speaking and testifying to people to believe in him. And for them to believe, the Lord needed to also testify and talk about evidence and works and wonders and events that have happened to many people so that they would believe and the Lord would work the miracles and the healings so that people could see and hear and believe in the Lord. Thanks be to our God. That is why today also the Lord works miracles. The Lord heals. He works wonders. He protects and keeps many people from danger. He protects them and their life from death. He protects them from death. There are people who are in life or death situations and God protects them. And so that is how we know that, that the word is being preached, that we are on the right path and that the righteous, upright word of God is being preached. If there were no signs, if there were 
no sign there, a work, a wonder, a miracle, we would not believe because we would say that everything is just out of words, but we don't see any actions. We don't see anything in reality, but we do see them. Glory to our God. We believe in the Lord that he is the same yesterday and today. And so this is our God that over 2000 years, he preached all of this. He today also works all of these miracles in our lives. We believe in him. And so this centurion listened to the Lord and he believed. And he said, just say the word. By you just saying the word, my servant will be healed. It isn't necessary for you to go to my house. And he says, for I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it immediately. And so, since I also am a man under authority, I have my servants who obey me, you, my Lord, you are the Lord. You are the king. You are superior, the one sent by God. You are the prophet. You are the high priest. And that is why I tell you, you must just say the word and they will obey you. Everyone will obey you. Not just human beings, but also those spirits of the air, of darkness, they will hear you, they will listen to you and respect you and they will submit themselves to you. That is what the man wanted to tell the Lord, glory to God, glory to the Lord. And it says when Jesus heard it, these words, this answer by this man, the centurion, it says that he marveled and said to those who followed, assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Why did the Lord say that not even in Israel? He was in Israel. He was in Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. Who was that centurion? He was a Roman. He was a Roman. He was a foreigner. He was a Gentile. A Gentile foreigner, a Roman. That is what he was. And he believed the Lord. And that is why the Lord was marveled. The Lord Jesus was marveled. Not even in Israel have I found such great faith as this man has. He said, and I say to you that many will come from east. Look at this verse. It says many things. It says, and I say to you that many will come. People, human beings, I'm adding on from east and west and sit down with Abraham. And I would even say from the north and south, also the entire world, because the entire globe has north, south, east, and west. And here I would say to have all four, the four, what are they called, brother? The four cardinal points. They will come the Lord says here, and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Where? In the kingdom of heaven. When the Lord makes this promise, this promise was not included in the law of Moses. In the law of Moses, God had only chosen a nation called Israel. And he had given them the laws and said, fulfill all of these laws because you are going to be my chosen people, my unique people, a people that would be an example for many nations, but it was never so. But since the Lord knew that that wasn't going to happen, that is why he said, I am going to form my people of Israel in the future with the Messiah and I will form my people of Israel that is perfect, my heavenly Israel, spiritual one, and I will form it. And I am not going to form it just with a group of people here in, uh, in Israel, but I'm going to form it with men and women or with people that dwell in the north, south, east, west, in the world. Glory to our God. That is the great promise of the Lord. He included us, the Gentiles, us, the foreigners, 
that did not belong to the people of Israel. We did not belong to the Jews. But the Lord here made his wonderful promise. And I say to you that many will come, many will come from these different cardinal points on the globe. And they are going to sit down with Abraham, who was the first that God made the promise to. He told Abraham, you will be the father of many nations. Of course, because the people who come from all those cardinal points in the world are people from many nations. And that is going to be fulfilled and it is being fulfilled and it's beginning to be fulfilled that promise that Abraham would be the father of many nations. Blessed is the Lord that they would sit down with Isaac and Jacob as well because God spoke the same promise, the same one he made Abraham, he made it to Isaac and Jacob. And they will all be in the kingdom of heaven. That is what we today are preaching. We today are fighting to continue to walk on this path because we want to belong to the kingdom of heaven there is no earthly kingdom, but the one in heaven. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Then here, the Lord says in verse 12, he says, But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. In that moment, the Lord Jesus Christ here, who was he referring to? Who were the sons of the kingdom? The people of Israel. I like those who read the Bible. I congratulate the readers of the Bible. But the sons of the kingdom, they, the people of Israel, they were the first to be chosen. It says, they will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and sorrow and gnashing of teeth, sadness, grief, affliction. Everything will be there. We give thanks to our God. We are not happy that they have lost those blessings from God or that title. We are happy that the Lord has looked upon us with eyes of mercy and we are here now in his presence. Blessed is his name forever. Hallelujah. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Jesus said, go your way, go home. And as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. Because it says that in another gospel, it says that when the man went home, he found his servant healed. The Lord healed him instantly. Thanks be to our God. God lives. God is a living God of power. He speaks. He spoke yesterday and speaks today. And he will speak forever. Glory to God. Then it says here, Another occurrence here in verse 14. It says that after, well, we don't know if it was right after or a different day. Or a different day. It says, now when Jesus had come into Peter's house. Because here we are not reading this in chronological order, the life of our Lord. We are reading about his miracles, his wonders, what the apostles and the witnesses saw and heard and what they told of what the Lord did helped by the Holy Spirit, of course. And so there was another occasion. It says that Jesus had come into Peter's house. As I said, this isn't going in order of what we just read. This could have been a different day and a different occasion. But the point is that Jesus went into Peter's house and saw Peter's mother-in-law lying with a fever. So he touched her hand and the fever left her. And she arose and served them. There the Lord worked another miracle because he showed the people that were following him and his disciples. He was showing them that he had power and that he had authority and that he was the one sent by God and that everyone needed to believe him and believe his doctrine. And it says, when evening had come, they brought to the Lord many who were demon-possessed. In other words, many men or women as well, surely, filled with evil spirits, filled with demons, those demons dwelling in those people. 
what we call today dementia, people who aren't in their right mind and they are not sane, people who have paralysis and different types of illnesses that don't let them speak or hear or to reason, nor do they let them move. All of those are evil spirits that come and possess the person's body, whether they are adults or children, and they are left paralyzed. They are left there debilitated. And that is what happened. And it says that they brought to him many people with these spirits, with these demons, and he cast out the spirits. It says, and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick. Glory to the Lord. And so all it took was the order of the Lord that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. When he prophesied, when Isaiah prophesied, this is found in Isaiah 53, 4. And the prophecy says, The Lord, he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. And so there, that is the Bible verse that the prophet Isaiah prophesied. And here the Lord Jesus Christ was fulfilling this prophetic word. Thanks be to our God. And here we continue in verse 18. It says, And when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave a command to depart to the other side. Then a certain scribe came, and we can imagine the amount of people that followed the Lord. People speaking, saying, the Lord is working miracles and everyone is bringing their sick. Everyone is bringing the sick, people who have evil spirits, people who have physical illnesses. Everyone looking for the Lord and he was healing everyone. Because here it's not written all of the thousands or millions of miracles that the Lord did at that time. And so it says, then a certain scribe came and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man, in other words, the teacher, the teacher who is here before you, that you are saying that you would follow me wherever I go, that person has nowhere, has nowhere to lay his head. The Lord did not have properties because the Lord came to preach, to give the good tidings of salvation. And the Lord was not interested in acquiring earthly possessions because really you could see that he was a human being, but he really wasn't. He wasn't a human being who needed these properties or to have land and build a house. He came to do what needed to be done, to preach and to teach. And then he left to heaven, there where he has always had his throne, his dwelling place. Glory to God. It is a great mystery when it says that he took flesh and became man as a human being. It is a mystery, but we believe because we need to believe what the Lord teaches us, what he tells us, and not question him, nor question too much, or say, theoretically, tell me this and that and teach me. No. And so the Lord said to the man, he said, your teacher doesn't have a place to lay his head. He doesn't have properties. Well, because the Lord didn't need them. But other human beings, other people do. They need to have a place to lay their head, to have a place to live because they're human. But the Lord, he didn't need it because he, he wasn't a human being like anyone else. And so well, another, another person, it says that another of his disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Implying, Lord, I'm going to follow you. I want to be your disciple, but I need to wait first for my father to die, to bury him. Because the law of Moses says that children need to honor and watch over their parents. So I need to wait for my father to die in order to bury him and to organize everything. This way, I'm able to follow you, Lord. I will follow you. 
And the Lord says to him, let's go back and read verse 21 again. Then another of his disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And look at what the Lord answers. But Jesus said to him, follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. Implying that this man, this man who was saying that he would follow him, had family. He had brothers and sisters, uncles, aunts, other family members. They did not care about knowing the Lord. They didn't care about listening to the word of God. Surely they heard that the Lord preached the kingdom and he worked miracles and they said, no, we are of the law of Moses and no one is going to take us out of the law of Moses. So only one person went to follow the Lord. That is why the Lord tells him, let the dead, in other words, your family members who are dead for God because they have not wanted to come to listen to my word, my doctrine. They have not wanted to come and receive blessings from heaven. And so they are dead for God. Let them, as your family members, they are going to bury your father when he dies. They will take it upon themselves and bury your father and you will not be at fault. Let them be because they also have to fulfill this duty. That is what happened. So the Lord said, follow me. Let the dead bury their own dead. Very well. There the Lord gave the teaching. He spoke to this man. We don't know if he followed the Lord or if he turned back or if he changed his mind. We don't know. The point is that the Lord gave this teaching of the doctrine. Thanks be to the Lord, because that's what we want. That the Lord may teach us doctrine and that we may learn and follow his path. Let us continue here in verse 23. It says, the Lord, when he got into a boat, we don't know if it's the same day or a different day. When Jesus got into a boat, his disciples followed him. And suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea so that the boat was covered with the waves. But the Lord Jesus was asleep. We see how he behaved as a human being. Then his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. But he said to them, Why are you fearful, O you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the Lord criticized them, Why are you fearful? Why don't you have faith? What happened here? They had seen all of the miracles and signs the Lord had worked. They were seeing the wonders the Lord did. And after all of this, they still didn't believe the Lord was that important being from God, the one sent by God, the Son of God there. It seems as though they were still not able to take in this doctrine. They were not able to understand or comprehend it. That is why in that moment when the waves were crashing, they were fearful and they felt alone because at that moment, they did not trust that they were with an important person. They were with the Son of God, with the one sent by God, with the Savior. They didn't understand this. They didn't comprehend it. Their fear was greater than their faith, than their belief, or their fear was greater than having seen all of those hundreds of signs and wonders that they were witnesses of. And that is why the Lord said, O oh, you of little faith. We today, brothers and sisters, have seen many people, those of us who have been in the church for some years now, we have seen God's hand. We have seen God's might, his miracles and healings. We have been witnesses that God has made us promises and has fulfilled them. We have been witnesses to all of the wonders that God has done in people's lives. So if today something happens to us that is very bad, something similar to this, a shipwreck, then we need to trust in the Lord and to hold fast to prayer and cry out to the Lord saying, protect us, keep us safe. Look at this 
storm, this hurricane, everything that is happening, all that is going on. My life is in danger, but you have made me so many promises. I don't think I'm going to die yet. You're going to protect me, but we are not going to doubt God, but trust in the power of the Lord. He will save us and protect us because we have all been witnesses of the power of God manifested in many people. That is why. Very well. So the Lord was not pleased by this. And he said these things and scolded them. It says, so the men marveled after the Lord worked the miracle. And it says that the men were marveled saying, who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? So those men were the people that were there that followed the Lord. But perhaps the disciples as well, they realized that the Lord worked the miracle and that they were fearful at that moment. And so who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? They still didn't believe him. Many people heard and wanted miracles to be worked. They wanted to see the signs, but to believe and have conviction, they didn't. And that is the sad part. That is what is sad today. Many people who have been in the church for many years, having seen God's hand and God's power manifesting himself in many ways, and yet they still doubt. They still don't believe. They are still there to turn back and to leave and go back into the world to live their world once again and to commit sin. That is very sad and painful. I think that person would be ungrateful with God. And that is what would happen. There are many ungrateful people. That is what they do. But we, we are here fighting and we don't want to be this way. We want to be steadfast and press on and to stay standing to praise our God because he deserves it. And we want to give the honor and glory to him. When he had come to the other side, to the country of the Gergesenes, and so since they were on a boat, they made it to the other side, to the country of the Gergesenes, there met him two demon-possessed men coming out of the tombs. So here it says two demon-possessed men, and in the book of Mark or Luke, it says that it was one demon-possessed man. But logically, logically, I believe that it was one, and I say, it's my logic. I tell you this. It says that there were two demon-possessed men. In the other book, it says one. And they were coming out of the tombs, exceedingly fierce so that no one could pass that way. And suddenly they cried out saying, What have we to do with you, Jesus, you son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? Because it was the demons that were speaking to the Lord. Have you come here to torment us before the time? So, I say that it was just one man because it says in the book that it's one. If it were two, two people filled completely with demons, then they are not going to understand each other and they were going to kill each other. Or one kills one or the other kills the other, but two demon-possessed men together... If people who are sane, human beings, when they are sane and they are living together and they have arguments, right? They have many arguments and misunderstandings. There are fights. There are quarrels, right? They offend each other. They sometimes even become very aggressive physically and they hit each other and they punch each other. Referring to people who live together. If there is no understanding between two people who are sane, how would it be with two people filled with demons, crazy, who cannot reason? And they're together, there would be no understanding or unity. And so here, we're not going to say that it was a mistake in the Bible or an error, but we know that all of these things are compilations of testimonies of people and disciples that heard and saw things, they were with the Lord and saw these miracles and they told in their way what they heard and saw. So this is very normal and natural. For example, if there was an accident or perhaps a person is there and there are people shooting at each other, they call witnesses. Each witness says something different. Why? Because there's a witness that saw a person the other person saw the other person who was shooting. Then the other person was looking at the one who fell down, who got shot. So each person has a different version of the act. And so that is why, that is why this is my way of thinking. 
that it must have been just one demon-possessed man. And we find this in Mark, in Mark and in Luke. In Mark, there it says that it was just one. So that when you read, do not get worried or doubt or question it. It's just simply the information that each person saw. So in this information, it seemed that it was two people, but it was just one. So the act was a reality, a truth. It isn't a lie. And these demon-possessed men were crying out to the Lord saying, have you come here to torment us? And it says that a good way off from them, there was a herd of many swine. And the demons begged him saying, if you cast us out, permit us to go away into the herd of swine, it says in verse 31. So the demons spoke to the Lord and said, if you cast us out of this body where we are living, allow us or permit us to go away into the herd of swine and we'll enter the swine. And the Lord said, go. And so they had come out. They went into the herd of swine. But what happened to the swine? It says that the whole herd of swine ran violently down the steep place into the sea and perished in the water. Why? What happened there? They went crazy, the poor animals. The poor animals, the poor swine, with those very strong and powerful demons, because I suppose that they were a legion of spirits that were a legion. There were about 2,000 spirits or demons. They went into the swine and they went crazy. And either way, they went into the sea and they drowned. And the demons still had to come out of the swine because the swine had drowned. And since evil spirits cannot be without, they want to be in a living matter. And they choose, demons choose human beings to live in human beings. Because with human beings, they feel happier. So with swine, yes, while the swine was alive, they were a bit calm and a bit peaceful, these demons. But since they became crazy, they drowned and the demons either way were in darkness, in the abyss, in space, suffering, and they were tormented. That is what happened. And here it says in verse 33, then those who kept them fled. In other words, the owners of the herd of swine. And they went away into the city and told everything. So they were witnesses and they went to the city to tell everything that they heard and saw and what had happened to the demon possessed. And the whole city came out to meet Jesus. And when they saw him, they begged him to depart from their region, to depart. They said, look, leave here because here you're going to ruin us. I imagine the owner of the swine. The owner of the swine said, you are going to ruin me. Look at my herd of swine. Now I am ruined. I am bankrupt. I have no money. Go, leave. How must people have been? How must people have been? They were so ungrateful. They didn't care. They didn't care about the work of God, the miracles of the Lord, what the Lord was doing. They didn't care. They just cared about the material things in life. They were sorrowful for having lost their swine and they told them to leave, leave here. No, we cannot look down on our God. Our God is first in our lives. We must seek that living God of power who speaks, that God that spoke to Abraham, that made him promises, that God that was manifesting himself in this time 2000 years ago and God working his miracles and signs today also the Lord manifests himself to many people in dreams and visions revelations and prophecy he speaks to people he shows them the way he encourages them to follow and believe in the Lord so that they may attain eternal life that is what our God does and so we must do the will of our God. Let us please our God. Let us love God with all of our hearts. Let us love him. We are going to follow the Lord. And you who do not congregate, I invite you to go to the church. Go to the congregation so that God 
may speak to you and so that you may live these wonderful experiences that are lived with our God who is living and mighty. Let us pray, Heavenly Father. Holy Father, we give you thanks, my Lord. We give you thanks because we are privileged. We are before you. We are knowing your path. We are being invited by the Holy Spirit when he tells us to press on, to not lose heart, that we may be strong, that we may be courageous, that we may raise our heads and press on steadfastly on the upright path, on the straight path, without turning any way, without looking back, nor to the sides, but to press on. To press on until we make it to the end of this stage, of this race. And then you will receive us there in eternal life. Glory to your name. Thank you, Lord. That is what we want, Lord. That is what we want. We want many people to go. We want thousands and thousands and millions of people of the millions that there are in this world. Speak to all of them, Lord. Bring them, Lord, to your kingdom. And to us, give us that power, that authority, those gifts, that support, so that we may win over many souls for you, souls for the kingdom of heaven. Thank you, Lord. Now, Holy Father, we ask for your mercy and love. For the people, for all of those men and women of any age who have physical illnesses, different types of illnesses that there are, illnesses that are incurable, illnesses that bring people to death, pain that people suffer through those illnesses. Lord, that you may heal them. Heal them. All our illnesses just as it is written, just as you promised that you would take our illnesses, that you would heal and remove our pain. Extend your mighty hand, work miracles and signs, my Lord. Show yourself to people so that they may believe that you are, that you exist, and that you deserve the honor, glory, and praise. Also, Lord, remove witchcraft and sorceries, rebuke all unclean spirit and demon, witchcraft and curses, rebuke them and deliver each person. Deliver and cleanse each person. Blessed is the Lord. We give you thanks, Lord. Thank you for your mercy and for your love. Yo quiero más y más de Cristo. Yo quiero más de tu poder. Yo quiero más de su presencia. Yo quiero más y más de él. Yo quiero más y más de Cristo. Yo quiero más de su poder. Yo quiero más de su presencia. Yo quiero más y más de él. Thanks be to our God. The glory and the honor and praises for him. Thank you very much, beloved brothers and sisters. May God bless you. See you soon. The kiss for the children and a hug for all of you. May God be with you all. Thank you.